So I got an email today about a church. Uh, apparently, it gets a lot of publicity. Uh, Westboro Baptist Church. Um, I hadn't really heard of them, and I don't think it's a church I would ever want to attend. And I, I'm surprised if that many people are attending this church. But their, it seems like their entire message, um, actually their URL is God Hates Fads. And on the very top of their website, it's God Hates Fags. So it would appear that their gospel message is not Jesus loves us and he died for our sins. That anyone, be it a homosexual, a liar, a cheater, or adulterer who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. See, that's the gospel. But their gospel message seems to be very narrow down to one message. Hey, God hates fags. Hates fags, hates fags, hates fags. So I was asked to comment on that. And my comment is this. Number one, that is not the gospel. Number two, I wonder to you people at Westboro Baptist Church, how many people, how many gay people do you think you would lead to Jesus with that message of God hates fags? By the way, the word fag isn't even in the Bible. Does God hate sin? Well, sure he does. But does God hate his children? No. Do his children sometimes sin, including the act of homosexuality? Well, sure they do. Does God hate them if they've called on the name of the Lord and believe? Well, certainly he does not. But I want to know if your goal is to share the gospel and lead people to Jesus, how do you intend to lead people to Jesus with such a horrible, in-your-face, hateful, wrathful message? Remember the prostitute who, when Jesus sat down with her? Did Jesus look at her and say, I hate you? Well, no, he didn't. Jesus told all the other guys, remember he told all the religious elite, hey, you guys want to stone her? Let the first one of you who was without sin stone her. Hey, you at Westboro Baptist Church, why don't you who was without sin be the one to throw the first stone at these gay people since you're so uh, in tune with God's heart, right? You know what Jesus said? He sat down to the prostitute who apparently had been caught in the act and he held her hand and he says, who condemns you? And she said, no one. And Jesus said this, nor do I go and sin no more. Now, what if she would have sinned again? Let me tell you right now, Westboro Baptist Church, Jesus would have held her hand and said, I do not condemn you. Now, again, go and sin no more. You see, this is what you people at Westboro Baptist Church apparently don't get. We are not saved by our sexual preference. We are not saved by our ability to sin less. While we should sin less, we should avoid it like the plague, uh, any kind of sin. We are not saved by those things. We are saved by faith. And your message essentially sounds like this. Hey, Jesus died for sin, but if you're gay, you're excluded. That's the sin of, uh, that leads to death, I guess, to you people. And it's really offensive because, look, I'm not going to say that homosexuality, I'm not going to give in and cave into this ridiculous message that homosexuality is not a sin. But this idea that you have lifted it up here, I mean really elevated it to the point that that's your URL, that's the big headline on your website, tells me you don't realize that the wages of sin, any kind of sin, is death. We are all guilty by this true standard of God, of God's law. I don't care if you're lying, cheating, stealing, a homosexual, pride, boastful, we all have the same problem. It's called sin. And we all have need the same solution. He's called Jesus. And the only thing that's going to lead a liar to stop lying, uh, an adulterer to stop committing adultery, a homosexual to stop committing acts of homosexuality, the only hope we have is to be saved, is to receive the Holy Spirit, to have God living in us and guiding us and leading us. So what you're trying to do is tell someone, hey, you need to stop being gay first, and then God will love you, and then you can get saved. You see, Westboro Baptist Church, you've absolutely missed the mark big time here. You, want, you really care about saving fags, as you might say? If you really care, your number one goal would be to lead them through Jesus with a message like, for God so loved the world, the gays, the liars, the cheaters, the adulterers, all of us, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would call on the name of Jesus would be saved. Let God do the changing. Let God work inside them. Remember, for while we were still helpless, right? This is Romans 5, 6. At the right time,
Christ die for the ungodly. Oh yeah, that was you, Westboro Baptist Church, too. I guess you have a special deal that you, you don't hold yourself to the same standard as they do. And don't tell me that you people don't still struggle with sin. James said we all stumble in many ways. Are you somehow better than them? Oh, maybe because they have six sins or you think their sin is a little bit deeper. That maybe theirs is not going to be forgiven, but yours is. Um, I want to read a passage out of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, uh, verses 9 through 11, because I imagine you guys are grabbing onto this, but you don't follow through. It says, do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor the slanderers, nor the slenderers, uh, swindlers uh, will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I did see we had the homosexuality in there, but I don't see you guys putting up uh, the, uh, the, the drunkards, right? They're not on your website. Uh, you don't have the adulterers. Now, it's a good thing you don't have that on there, men, because let's be honest. Jesus told us what the true standard of adultery was. If you look with lust, guilty of the fires of hell, and you and you and you and everyone in your church, self-included, would be guilty under that standard if you don't water down the true standard of adultery. It's a heart condition. What was the point of Jesus saying that? It says every one of you who are trying to get right with God through human effort and man and, and law will fail. You will fall short. If you're angry with the brother, guilty. What was the point? We need Jesus. We need a better way. Who can be saved? What men didn't uh, choke on it, it, all those words when Jesus said, looking with lust? Why do you take homosexuality and lift it up here? Now, I know that Jesus just said, make no mistake, none of these people would enter uh, the kingdom of heaven. But hold on. I thought we were saved by faith, saved apart from works of the law. I thought that it was a free gift, lest anyone boast. Exactly, Westboro Baptist Church. You need to read the rest of the verses because it goes on to say this. He's writing Christians. He goes, Don't you get it? Nobody, not just homosexuals. Drunkards, liars, cheaters, nobody will inherit the kingdom of God. But since he's talking to Christians, I'm sure some of these people still sin. They probably all do and struggle. He goes on to continue with, but, but, your identity essentially is not based anymore on what you do. It's who you're in. You were dead in Adam, now you are alive in Christ. So he goes on to say, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified found righteous in the name of jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ christ and by the spirit of our god you see their identity has changed no longer listen if a man is called on the name of the lord and i hope he never would do the following but if he actually committed an act of adultery saved He's going to heaven. He is righteous. He was washed. He was cleansed. He's been forgiven. Uh, Jesus, his blood, the scripture tells us, is the perfect propitiation, meaning to satisfy a deity. Um, what are the wages of sin? The wages of sin is death. Why are you watering it down? Why are you acting as though somehow this one sin of homosexuality is the unforgivable sin? So again, I'm going to close with this. I, your message is disgusting. It's repulsive. And for anyone else listening to this, that is not the common Christian uh, theology. We do not run around saying God hates fags. We say God hates sin. But if you called on the name of the Lord, your sins have been taken away. They have been forgiven. Not because you sin less, not because you're doing better than everybody else, but because of the blood of Jesus. It is a free gift. And it just want everyone to know that most of us Christians do not support such a horrific message. And if these people really care about saving souls, they would get off their high horse with this arrogant message of God hates fags standing out there with signs. And they would get out there and say, no, God loves you so much so that he died for your sins. We're not asking you to change. We're asking you to call on the name of the Lord. And here's the newsflash. Jesus will do the change. May take a day, may take a year, may take a lifetime, but as we renew and transform our minds, the high, God is able to save us completely and change us as we grow in our new identity. Hope that helps. God bless you guys.